classrooms with desks, blackboard, and chalk. How boring, isn't it? So here we are now that the landscape of education is changing rapidly, and we all are aware of this. Today, AI and online tools are transforming the entire education experience. It is my immense pleasure to introduce some very special leaders here with us who have played a very integral and a vital role in shaping our journey here in Physics Bala. A warm, warm welcome to our dear leaders, Deborah Quazzo and Jennifer Lee. With this, I would also take a moment to welcome our Amrit sir, who heads the strategy and business, and Gopal sir, who is the chief uh, operating officer, and Mehul sir, who heads the academics and the outcome. And a warm, warm welcome to all my dear friends, colleagues. A warm welcome to you. <laughs> Today we are here with a special event where we dive deep into the dynamic world of educational technology, investment, as well as innovation. We are thrilled to have not one, but two extraordinary guests with us, Deborah Corso and Jennifer Lee, two powerhouse leaders in EdTech Venture Capital. About Deborah Corso, co-founder of ASU GSV Summit and managing partner of GSV Ventures, with her passion for scale education innovation, she has been a leader in the pre-K to gray learning landscape, working with companies like Coursera, Course Hero, and Physicswala. She's a key figure in driving ethic investments globally and has been named one of Insider's top 100 seed investors three times. <laughs> Joining her is Jennifer Lee, partner at GSV Ventures and former chief growth officer at Photomath. Jennifer brings over 14 years of investing experience and has worked with companies such as Coursera, WebKit, and SoloLearn during her time as the principal at Learn Capital. With a global investment portfolio spanning 17 countries, she has helped shape the future of edtech across emerging markets. She's an MIT and Harvard Business School alumna and a Kaufman Fellow, contributing her expertise to GSV Ventures' mission for transforming the education. A big round of applause. So with this, we will begin our first segment. So to begin with you, Deborah, ma'am, you have witnessed the evolution of education over several decades. So my question to you would be, how do you think the technology has reshaped today's teaching methodologies? Would you like to comment on this? Um, sure, sure. I mean, I think that obviously um, online learning is a relatively new phenomenon. Uh, it started, you know, it's had a bunch of waves. I think the first wave was very flat um, and it's gotten increasingly engaging. I think physics well is a poster child for the evolution of online learning. So certainly when, you know, when I went to school, it was a traditional broadcast model, teacher at the front or faculty member at the front and students in, in desks. There was no, it, that was it. Uh, so there was no other elements to it. And, um, and certainly technologies starting with learning management systems followed. I mean, there's a whole, you know, group of technologies that have transformed learning starting, starting, you know, back in the, back in the day when learning management systems were invented. And um, yeah, and today I think it's with AI and everything else that's happening, it's, um, uh, I think that the pace of change is likely to change, uh, to, to greatly increase as, as AI increasingly comes into play. So emphasizing on the AI tools, and uh, I've been through it that when it comes to AI tools and the data, you very affirmatively put on physics wala. And uh, with this, uh, there's a question that I would like to ask you, ma'am that how do you think that the conventional teaching methods is relevant with what we, have, what we are having in the current education system? How do you relate? Do you think there is some relevance that can be brought from the conventional education system? And definitely the online teaching culture is definitely booming. So what do you, would you like to comment on this? For the conventional education system, I mean, there were some aspects that they really got right, right? The importance of engagement, interaction, um, feeling like you're connected, the relationship between teacher and student. And I think what we're seeing today now and what uh, technology is hopefully doing is trying to take some of those best aspects of the traditional education system and bring it to a much broader mass, right? And I think that's a lot about what Physics Walla's mission is. It's how do we take 
um, the great aspects of education and make it affordable and accessible to all. And technology can really do that in very interesting ways by reducing costs, allowing great teachers to scale themselves and to really be able to create content also that's more engaging and, and in various different languages at different price points. So I think that's where we're seeing education, uh, technology help push forward education. Yes, seeing the positive aspects of how technology is helping reshaping the education system right now, be it in India or globally. Talking in terms of global front, uh, we all are aware about the economic turndown that even the edtechs are facing. But during this environment also, I would like to ask you, what opportunities do you see emerging in investing in edtechs right now with this scenario as well? You know, I think the education, because um, I'm, I'm, I've been here a, a long time. I think the um, education always goes through cycles. So it's it's uh, whether it's a K twelve market where in the U S. we we see government funding goes up and and right now government funding in the U S. is going down because the the money that was poured into the K twelve system that didn't move the needle very much by the way is running out post COVID. The ESSER funds is what they're called. Um, higher ed suffers the same things um, and, and it's it's a global phenomenon. I, I think that different countries have different. Um, different reasons for the fluctuations in funding. Um, I think that that, uh, that creates opportunities for ed tech because I think there are opportunities. As Jen said, the, the, one of the great um, things about really transformative ed tech, and again, Physics Walla being a great, a perfect example, is that you can, you can increase access, you can lower costs, you can improve outcomes, and you can provide leverage to the learning leader. And that should all, you know, that should allow you to deliver things at lower cost. You know, what we saw was the market crash. And when the market crashed, obviously ed tech funding crashed and it crashed everywhere. It didn't just it crash in India. Um, it's certainly been slower to come back, I would say, than other sectors. Although obviously the big fu financing that was just announced um, last week, I guess, I don't, know, I don't even know what day it is, but um, with Physics Wallow is, is a great sign of health returning to profitable, growth businesses in education. Um, so I think, you know, things wiggle and waggle, markets wiggle and waggle, and that's just life. Uh, so I think you can always expect things will never be a linear uh, linear trajectory. Um, but I think it does, the wiggles and waggles can really create opportunity for great entrepreneurs. They can also create discipline that maybe didn't exist in the, in the environment where we had so much money that people didn't know what to do with it. Um, so I think we've seen a lot of our businesses get better because they had to let, you know, create layoffs. They had to cut costs. They had to make their business models better. So I, you know, I think I'm really optimistic, uh, about what the forward landscape looks like. And I think we're all, Jen's got, you know, a great perspective on this, but I think we're all kind of wa waiting and watching to see how the AI plays play out. Um, and you know, what companies actually benefit and which ones get hurt because there are ones that are getting hurt right now. Um, so it's, but in general, I think it's it's a pretty good. It is really wonderful to see that optimistic leaders like you make that tech uh, bloom globally. When it comes to investing in uh, different countries, definitely the cultural differences impact. So I would like to know uh, what are the key factors that you would like to uh, comment on and share with us that the key factors that makes you, yes, this is it, and we'll go for it And in, when it comes to investment. So, well, there are some key factors that are global in nature, right? So. Um, you want to see a great product. <laughs> you want to see founders who really care about their users and are solving problems that laser focus on the user and the user experience, which is something that we definitely see here, you know, with that physics wall up for sure, is I think one of the most critical aspects. Um, and then, of course, you'd also like to see markets where the tailwinds are in your favor, where demographic trends are um, positive. So, you know, growing populations, um, rises of the middle class, things where people have more spending uh, and are going to use that spending to invest in things like education. We see that very strongly in this part of the world as well as in other parts of Asia. Um, so those are the kind of basic things that always intrigue us. That's really insightful, ma'am. Taking one of the point, uh about the middle class. India is largely populated with the middle class economic background, uh, basically the middle class economic groups, we can say. This middle class group can either be a boon or a bane. So with this challenge, what do you think that can make, uh, that made you invest in India and particularly in Physicswala? You know, Physicswala, it has kind of got everything. I mean, I think it's, it, you know, we've been involved in India for a number of years. We, we just as a, education organization as an education 
um, event organization. We have this big event called the ASU GSV Summit, where Alok and Pratik came this year, which is great in San Diego every April. India, and it's been going on for about 16 years. Uh, Indian entrepreneurs came very early. Um, they were, we had gotten to know many of the entrepreneurs in the ed tech scene. Um, very early, 2010 was when we started. And, you know, Baiju came and all these kinds of folks before they were, you know, before they were well known um, in any kind of form. So um, we were intrigued, you know, we loved the idea. Um, we loved what the, what the, the foundations were in India quite early. Uh, we didn't raise a fund until 2016. So, um, and the first fund, it was small, and so we did not really venture outside of the United States. And the second fund and third fund, we, you know, we've leaned, we leaned in more globally. And third fund, it really is U.S. and India. And the reality is, India is without quite, you know, is the second largest um, education market in the world. Uh, it is got all the characteristics of kind of a perfect storm. It's got um, because most of you all are engineers by uh, by training, you don't really have to look very far to find a technical uh, founder in the mix because you need a technical founder in the mix. That's not as you know in in the U.S. That's not you know quite. It's not the same kind of um, statistics. You have a culture that cares deeply about education and it's and it, and it's being an underpinning for social and economic mobility. Um, it's it seems hard to understand, but unfortunately that is not true necessarily in the United States. We don't see that same kind of commitment to spending on education regardless of socioeconomic profile. We don't see the kind of um, complete appreciation for you know, learning education and skilling as a, as a as kind of the, the critical key for um, you know your children to 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 have it better than you do, um, and but you do here and uh, and and you have the government you know operating really with the NEP and I, all that having some very constructive um, tailwinds which um, which is you know the U.S. has had some headwinds from a regulatory perspective as have other as have other countries like China where the Chinese government woke up one day and basically shut down the entire ed tech sector which was about three or four hundred billion dollars um, that really went away overnight when the Chinese decided that um, they no longer wanted uh, wealthy children to get the, you know, sort of the benefit of, of um, after school um, supplemental education services. So um, that's pretty and that's a pretty extreme example. So hopefully no, hopefully that doesn't happen again in any country. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we were not invested in India, that which was good. But um, yeah, so I think that we've India's got, you know, India is a powerhouse It's also becoming, you know, education as an export is becoming a critically important factor. I mean, we're an investor in quizzes, which is, you know, based here in Bangalore, fantastic founder, Anka Gupta, and, um, and really dominates the US K-12 system. They don't really have a presence here to, yet. They will um, at some point. But I think it is the power of the Indian um, model to have a lower cost back end, incredibly talented on, you know, engineers on the team, and really, as Jen pointed out, really product-led thinking about delivery. Um, Emeritus is another great example. They went. They have a fantastic back end here, and a really great company, great partner of ours, and um, and they really so far have, have primarily gone to market outside of India. Um, so that's also another, I think, a huge strength that you're that India is really has the ability to kind of begin to to. To export all of your educational expertise into into other markets, obviously physics well has a little bit of that with um, with the Middle East, not knowledge plan in the Middle East, but uh, and it will at some point probably be bigger. That's wonderful, ma'am. Um, I would like to ask you. Would you like to comment something uh, where uh, ma'am just emphasized on where India in terms of education is globally, but when it comes to ed tech, so where do you see India as its position and its potential in the ed tech hub? Um, maybe technologically, and it comes to innovation. Where do you see India as? Yeah, I mean, I think what Deborah said earlier, our portfolio speaks for itself. Um, it's largely split between the US and India right now, and that's because India holds a very prominent place within the global ed tech market. Um, I think the adoption of technology is happening very readily and quickly in India. It's one of the fastest countries for uses of AI. Um, and acceptance of AI. So I think what we're starting to also see is a, a very interesting models, people who are utilizing new technologies in an interesting way to fit the needs of this market. So we're starting to see a lot of interesting things in workforce training, starting to see a lot of interesting things around tutoring, which actually physics well is very much at the forefront of how do you integrate AI into really good educational products? How do you help it increase efficiencies, give 
um, one of the things that we like to say is uh, education of one, right? Going from education of many, where you have one teacher who might be teaching to a thousand students or you know, even 100, 800 students, um, but being able to use uh, AI technology to get that one-to-one -one interaction, make it personalized, create the individual learning class, understand the history of the student, what they're studying and how they wanna move forward. And so from that perspective, we see a lot of very interesting innovation happening um, out of the Indian ed tech market in particular. Yes, so that was really wonderful to know. Uh, with your partnership with GSP, I'm sure you would have made several investments and I would like to ask any particular, any such investment which has uh, really made a career break in your this journey with GSP Ventures? Well, of course it's going to be Physics Wawa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Unless that's, unless that's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> With this, I would like to ask any uh, last piece of advice that you would like to give to our dear students and anything that you would like to urge them to focus on. I, the one thing I would say, which is going to harp back on what I said earlier, and is to is take inspiration from, you know, Alok and, and Pratik, which is be user focused. Care deeply about your customer, and whoever it is you're trying to help and the journey that they're trying to solve. Um, if you're thinking about things from an entrepreneurial perspective, but uh, I think if you really focus on what are the needs of other individuals and how can you help them, then you know success kind of becomes like a gimme in some ways. And they, they really have a lot of examples. I think the other one is if you can align your mission with your, prof your, your personal mission with your professional career, it, it is just like, you, you know, it's just heaven. And um, certainly a lot and Pratik have uh, very much aligned their personal um, mission with their professional careers. They're inextricably linked. And, you know, I don't think there's any way to separate them from their personal mission and their professional careers. And I think that that's, a, you know, that's, a, that's the beauty of education technology, education innovation, that um, we get to work with lots of founders and entrepreneurs who, um, who, are, who are there to change the world. And if they can change the world and be financially very successful, that's a great thing too. Um, there is, you know, there is no, uh, there is no um, inconsistency with being, you know, having the highest level of impact on other people and having the highest level of financial return. In fact, we think um, ROI, ROE, which is return on education equals R, you know, IRR. So the higher the, your return on education, the higher the financial return. Um, and I think those guys are a, a, a great example of that mission oriented, uh, product led and mission led. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, this really means a lot to us. And ma'am, once again, I would like to just repeat key. Whenever Physics Wala's name is taken globally and the way you take it so affirmatively, this really inspires us to take Physics Wala towards uh, the glory and the legacy. And thank you so much for this, ma'am. With this, we come to the end of our segment. Thank you.